Hi, and my name is Kieran. I'm from Woodruff School, which is in Lyme Regis, and in February 2013, 16 students from years 9 to 12 came together to learn recording, research and interviewing skills so that we could record stories with older people from the town about their memories of growing up and working in Lyme Regis. Holly, Chris and myself, Basher, from Year 9, talked to Celia Rattenbury. Celia came to Lyme Regis in the 1930s as a young girl and she told us her memories about growing up in the town, of going to school and about the Olympic torch relay of 1948. When we interviewed Celia, she was keen to show us her photographs of her and her family and it gave us a real insight into what life was like back in the 1930s and 1940s. If I put these down, these are of, of what the beach was like when we came. It was all canvas tents. The, there was a raft, which my relations are sitting on. That was a jetty which de- went down below the Bay Hotel. That jetty went out into the sea, which I'm sitting on there. That's my mum and sister. Do you remember the day the war broke out? Oh, yes, I do. I remember it was my birthday. And my mother said, you can't have a party today because the war's broken out. And I felt very disappointed. And then my sister's boyfriend, who was a minister, actually, in the chapel in Lyme, um, he came up with an iced cake, which really made my day. (laughs) So I was lucky that way. Well, I was 12 when war broke out. And I really had no idea what that was going to mean to all of us, but it did make a lot of difference to the way you lived. And the blackout in the war was really dark. You couldn't see along the streets at all. I remember going along one one day with my mother. We were going to a rehearsal of a play. And as we walked along, the American soldiers passed and whistled. And she turned to me and she said, what a good job it's dark because they can't see how old I am. (laughs) (laughs) You have an autograph book with all the evacuees' um, autographs in. What did you think when the first evacuees came over? Oh, actually, I got on very well with them all. I've got the autograph book here in front of me and... I'll just read out one. Be kind to little animals, whatever sort they be, and give a stranded jellyfish a push into the sea. And that was Best Wishes from Cecily King, 1940. And then this one says to Celia, uh, from Heather, when the first great scorer comes to write against your names, he'll ask not if you were at lost, but how you played the game. When you get married and your husband gets cross, just pick up the poker and say, I am the boss. (laughs) And that was from Gillian Ramage. (laughs) How did Lyme change during the war? Well, it wasn't easy for a lot of people. And really, food was very, very difficult. We were very rationed. Um, I'm sure my mum went without a lot so that we had some you know, more things to kind of go at. But it was very... When I used to see the little packages of cheese and butter that were actually allocated to you, they were very small. I think most days at midday we had cold meat and mashed potato. We didn't have any cakes unless they were... Could have made so many out of your rations, but not very many. And things were very difficult. must have been very difficult for the the mother of the house, to cope, cope with it all. You didn't, your rations were very, very poor. It's hard, isn't it, to believe that? Well, we didn't have any bananas the whole of the war. You had what kind of grew locally, really, you know, fruit-wise and uh, vegetable-wise. Um, of course, we didn't get many sweets on the rations. You, you were very limited. I remember going into a little shop in Coombe Street... And I would have a halfpenny worth of something, if you can imagine a half penny. Somehow we seemed to make up for it. I, I don't ever remember feeling very deprived. 